Hello, my name is Julia Papa George. And I'm Becca Weiner. And you are listening to Radiothon 2014 on WNTH Radio 88.1 FM in Winneka. Today we are very excited to be talking to the writer slash comedian slash actor extraordinaire John Mullaney. John, thank you for taking our call. Thank you for calling. Oh yeah, no problem. Well, let's dive into it. You're a Chicago man yourself, aren't you? Yeah, Lincoln Park uh, has some good friends in the Winnetka area. Winnetka, Went to Walker nice. Brothers Pancakes a lot. Oh, classic. Uh, that is a classic. Is it still there? Oh, yeah. Right on Evanston. It's on Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. Uh, I remember I fainted once at church at uh, Faith, Hope, and Charity, and then <laughs> went to Walker Brothers. <laughs> nice. That's like a good remedy to the fainting. I hadn't eaten breakfast, and when, you know, you're going through puberty, you just get lightheaded a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Apple pancake or chocolate chippies? Do you remember? Real regular buttermilk. I'm a very boring person, as <laughs> they have gathered. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Well, this is a high school radio station, so it kind of begs the initial question of what you were like in high school or what kind of things you were into doing. Um, I was uh, an okay student in high school. Um, I was very lazy. Uh from middle school to high school. I liked school, but I was very lazy. Uh, my middle school gave us grades for effort, which uh, really bugged me. You'd get a grade, and then below it, you'd get a grade for effort. I don't know if you ever had that, but I think we my mom would get really frustrated with me. And she would be, she would say, you know, I wouldn't mind if you had all C's and D's as long as you had A's in effort. And I thought, like, that wouldn't make you sad if that's what you knew was happening. <laughs> My teachers, my teachers like Mrs. Mulaney, John is trying as hard as he possibly can. <laughs> Pushing his brain to the limit. And that's an F right there. She just really wanted me to try hard. Uh, I, I did better towards the end of high school. Um, I didn't get into too much trouble. I did things that could get you into trouble, but I was just very good about covering my tracks. I was sort of one of the, the better bad kids sometimes. I ran with a group that would uh, cause trouble, but I always kind of ran away before any adults or police showed up. Um, So, you know, I managed to have uh, a little bit of fun, but I was pretty well behaved. I had pretty strict parents, so I had to to watch what I was doing. Mm. Now, were you doing, like, acting and things like that in high school or sports or what? Um, Yeah, I was in school plays. And uh, then we had a thing, uh, this one-act festival where students could write one-act plays, and we'd put them on, like, they'd be student-directed, written, cast, text, and uh, I would act in those. Those were almost like 10-minute comedy sketches. Most of them were very silly, and most of the one-acts that got in were, like, very goofy, big character things. So I would do those. Those were a lot of fun. And then I did some plays. And text for plays and music. I text for musicals because I couldn't sing. But uh, I had a lot of fun in the lighting booth, too. That was always, there was always like a weird group of kids up in the lighting booth, <laughs> goofing around and missing cues. So it was a, it was a very fun time. Hmm. Weird things do happen in the lighting booth. <laughs> lighting booths are strange. You're unsupervised and it's a tiny area and you have all this responsibility to like hit the spotlight on Eliza Doodle, Doolittle at the right <laughs> moment. And it was great. That is great. Also, if we had audio cues, sometimes we'd do, like, you know, Voice of God audio cues where you we'd speak from the microphone in the booth, you yeah. know, to help. Like, I remember in My Fair Lady, it was to announce people at the big ball. And um, we would just try to make whoever was doing that laugh <laughs> so that they would break over the whole, you know, over the speakers. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Um, what? How can I say? Okay. Well, in your stand-up new in town, which is one of my favorites, I think it's hilarious, um, you talk oh, about... It's one of my favorites, too. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> you know, so you talk about being in a basement you know, party, I guess, with a sea of drunken high school students, which kind of reminds me of modern-day Lollapalooza for, for our time. Um, as a Chicagoan, have you ever you know, been to the music festival in the summer? No, I've actually never been to Lollapalooza. Um, I, you know, would ride my bike past it when I was younger. I, I, um, I hate to 
say this because I love that Chicago does them, but I was always annoyed by uh, um, Taste of Chicago and Blues Fest. They were so huge, and um, it was like just like in, it was like Addison after a Cubs game, but all of the downtown. It was just like an insane time. I'd go to them uh, when I was younger, and I always felt like it was just a zoo. Yeah. So I didn't go to a lot of festivals, but a, a lot of Grand Park things. I saw Radiohead in like 2000 um, on that summer stage that was near Grand Park, and that was great. I go to like single concerts, cool. but I don't know if I get to have a Lollapalooza. I'm not a festival person. Um, I performed on like Bonnaroo and stuff, Ooh. and that's fun for like a day. And then I really, I just like go back to the Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty. I'm always on stage at those things, like signaling to the van to get ready to go back to Marriott. Like I never, I never was one of the ones to perform at Bonnaroo and then camp out there. Hmm. Seems exhausting. Everybody who goes always comes back with some sort of story. Yeah, I just I'm I'm so exhausted and sunburnt in the first two hours that I give up. <laughs> so, in college, you did comedy, I assume, sketch comedy, improv, mm-hmm. correct? Um, and you were in a comedy... Get tr- comedy and improv and stand-up, yes. Yes, yes, yes. With the fantastic Mr. Nick Kroll, who you've worked a lot with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. So what's it like to work with him? Because it seems like it'd be a lot of fun, and it's something you do often. It's a lot of fun. Nick's one of the funniest people ever. Um, he was a senior in college when I was a freshman in college, and he ran the improv group, and I auditioned, and he cast me in the improv group. So I've been working with him since I was... 18 since the first week of Georgetown oh, wow. and he was uh, really really funny then and it's only gotten funnier and we're very close so we don't you know it's easy for us to write stuff together um, we kind of just walk around and come up with this and never really write them down so we forget a lot of stuff but we get a lot of stuff on air too so that's good. Yeah. I love working on his show and doing more next week shooting some sketches with him so it's always awesome. fun I'm really glad we get to do stuff together. Right. And you had, you recently just co-wrote, or I'm not sure how it went out, but Freshman Roommates, something, recently, right? No, no, no. That was in 2008. Was that That was a failed movie we wrote many years ago. Uh, we didn't want it called Freshman Roommates. Um, it was a movie we wrote for and pitched with Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan. And... Uh, we would go out to studios with Tracy and pitch the movie, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and then we wrote it, uh, sold it to a big studio, and we wrote it, and um, they changed the title a couple times. Eventually, it was Freshman Roommates, even though that wasn't what the movie was about. And we uh, then they decided not to make it. But it was fun, because it was the first time I'd ever been into a movie studio, so it was very cool to, to get paid to write a movie and it was really fun to work with Tracy Morgan and uh, then you know we didn't have to do any additional work on it so I have very fond memories of it <laughs> Made you feel from like an it. exciting and lazy point of view it was a good experience but freshman roommates now yeah that was I was pitching that movie I was trying to sell that movie right when I was hired at Saturday Night Live right and you've had a lot of the same week yeah a lot of luck with SNL one of my favorite bits on the Kroll Show, which you do, um, is when you are George St. Geekland of Oh Hello. Um, specifically, Too Much Tuna? Too Much Tuna Fish? Much is, tuna. It's a family fan favorite at yeah. my household. <laughs> um, which makes Really? Me, oh, yes. that's good. I'm very curious, from a personal standpoint, when you eat tuna fish now, do you have difficulty because there's some sort of irony, or do you feel like someone's going to be like, ah, gotcha, too much tuna fish? Or <laughs> no, I don't eat tuna fish. You don't? I got sick of it, no, from from eating it. Mer- mer- and from, mercury? Have you, seen, yes, have you seen when we made tuna fish martinis called yes. tuna teenies? Yes. <laughs> or martunas? I have a question. Yeah, so we used to do a live show in New York called Oh Hello, where we were those two old guys, and we would have different comedians on, and we would interview them. It was Thursday night every week for a couple years in New York, and at the end of it, we would make a martuna or a tuna teeny, and we would drink it on stage. And it was really funny to me, but I got so sick of the taste of tuna that I never eat it anymore. Did you do it with water or vodka? 
Uh, water. Okay, good. It's just both. I think either way, this doesn't sound very appealing. No, either way, it's terrible. <laughs> the fact that I don't drink, you know, was only made it a little easier. Right, right. And then what kind of um, inspiration, how did you come up with those characters? Because, you know, two nice old men with a lot to say kind of... I don't think they're nice at all. <laughs> <They're just laughs> uh, my character is always insulting people after he pranks them. Um, <laughs> we like those uh, types of guys. You know, they're, they're in Chicago, too. They're, they're older, and they're kind of liberal. They were, like, Democrats in the 60s, and they love to talk about the 60s, and they think that they were, they were really subversive. But now they're older and a lot crankier, and so they're a lot more crotchety and conservative, but they still think they're hip. That really appealed to me. There's a lot of those in Lincoln Park where I grew up as well. Mm. Let's see. And Too Much Tuna was a thing... Probably 2003, we were at a restaurant um, in New York uh, with a comedian named Jesse Klein, who is now a writer for the Amy Schumer show, right. at Amy Schumer. And um, we got a salad nicoise, you know, that salad that has tuna on it, mm -hmm. and it came and it had a ton, it had a ton of tuna, it had so much tuna on it. <laughs> and we both looked at each other and said, no, this is, this is too much tuna. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you ever, like, write old bits like, years and years before that kind of resurface later on TV? Well, or? that was the biggest example because right. we wrote that, or didn't write it. We thought of that in, like, 2003, and then eight years later did it on Curl Show. Look at you. You're so hip. So a few things have happened like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I've had ideas of Saturday Night Live or ideas for stand-up comedy jokes that I'll never do and kind of keep in a notebook for a long time and then eventually pull out for something. Mm. My mom likes to think that she invented Instagram, but then it never followed through, so she's eternally bitter. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Well, yeah, yeah right. Billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So you're obviously a very busy guy. Your self-titled TV show, Mulaney, is in pre-production? Question mark? Post-production? Well, uh, we're in post-production now. We made a bunch of episodes, and we had to edit them, and uh, we're all wrapped up, but I'm here in Los Angeles where I've been working on the show, and it was a great time. Yeah? Can you tell us what the angle is? What What's it about? Any side? I play a stand-up comedian named John Mulaney. Mm. It's, a, it's a real stretch. <laughs> and I auditioned for the part of John Mulaney, and I got it. So everyone should be very, very proud of me. <laughs> um, and I, um, I'm writing, you know, it's, it's a little bit based on my life, a little, it's kind of, you know, things uh, about my life with some examples changed, uh, you know, instead of, I, I write for a big game show that Martin Short hosts that's kind of like a deal or no deal, huge network game show. And he's my boss, but he's also my mentor, and I take a lot of life advice from him, even though he's a nut. And I have, uh, um, Two roommates, one played by Nassim Pedrad from SNL. Oh, I love her. Um, who I worked with at Saturday Night Live for a long time, and then we're doing this together. And uh, it's um, it's pretty loose. You know, there's no big premise. Like, I'm a base man who wakes up in the year 3017 or anything. Mm. If you see me do stand-up, it's that same guy. Beautiful. We're all... I'm looking forward to it. I think Beck is looking forward oh, to it, Oh, me too. too. Like Y'all gotta watch it or I'm dead. Sure. <laughs> um... As a writer, I'm curious, are there ever days where you're just like, man, nothing I write is funny, nothing is even, like, remotely working today? Yes, every, yeah, all the time, all, every single day. <laughs> so, I mean, um, how? That's okay, though, because you have, you have to have those days in order to get to the good days. You have to write a lot of D-minus jokes to get to an A joke. Um, so just, you know, relax. It's not... I remember someone telling me, you know, the Cohen brothers, Joel and Ethan mm -hmm. Cohen, um, directors and writers. They, a uh, uh, guy I know, did production uh, or uh, production design for them. Would that be the term? He did the storyboarding for all those movies. Okay. And so he was saying that, talking to them about their writing process, they say it's very, very slow. It's like um, watching paint dry, and that. Uh, 
to them, a good day is when they get one idea that they could use. So in The Big Lebowski, there's a, a German band. You see their album cover in the movie The Big Lebowski. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's the band that the nihilists were in. And uh, Cohen said that that was a like that them was a good day when they were able to think of the band name hmm. <laughs> that these guys the band, which is one line in the movie. So sometimes you just work for eight hours and get one joke or one idea out of it, and uh, that's a good day, you know. Right. It's 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 different though. It's a different kind of writing, I guess. I mean, relatively. I don't know. Writing jokes, I'm not very good at, but it seems similar to. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. Um, so writing what? Writing, like, like short stories, for example, or, or writing poetry. Sometimes you just need to, mm -hmm. like, spit it out, and, and it works, and the whole thing kind of works. Whereas, um, yeah. it seems like jokes can sometimes either be, you're there, you're not, or maybe neither. Um, yeah, they're probably in similar arenas. Um, you, uh, some days you feel like, oh, I either have it or I don't, but, uh, as someone who loves to procrastinate and loves to not write, um, it's uh, if you sit down and start doing it, you will you will get something done, no matter what you're doing. It's mm -hmm. terrible. I, I hate that the lesson is that you should just try, but uh, you should just try. You can you can try for effort, or you can try for a grade. Either way. Yeah, you know, try to get an A for effort. Just be <laughs> <the> in <joke. laughs> Um, that's it. Well. Let's see. In preparation for this interview, I did scroll through your Instagram, as well as your lovely fiance Anna Marie's, and even even Petunia's. If I'm going to be honest, your dog, Petunia Fisher. She has a good Instagram. She's got a great Instagram. I think she's adorable. So in the last few days, uh, it seems that Anna Marie has been on bachelorette partying, which kind of makes me wonder, if I may, personally, are you getting married in the not too distant future? Um, well, yes, that's why she would be my fiancé and go on a bachelorette party. Right, but I, I'm very excited that to be, you know, in this time, you know, even if it's in a, in the not-too-distant future. I'm very We're, I'm getting her. married in July. I am very excited. Uh, my fiancé uh, and I got engaged last May, uh, almost a year ago, and we're getting married in July, and I'm very excited. That is a very, very great congratulations from the WNTH Thank you, radio. Um, Thank you from everyone. Thank ev you, Trier, for the congrats. Everybody, our 90 DJs. And then I have just one more question before we can send you off. This one is from my brother, who's also a big, big fan. Let's see. Did you ever find some Xanax? Question mark. Oh. Is that okay to talk about on a high school radio station? No. I... I uh, Look, kids, don't abuse prescription drugs. <laughs> yes, I found them. Good. We <laughs> were worried. Uh, if you tell a sympathetic story on stage about how you can't get Xanax and you're doing it in New York City where everyone's on some version of Xanax, people in the audience will give you Xanax. Right. Not that you should ever take drugs that you don't have a prescription for. That is the moral of the day. Well... But I do all the time. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> John, thank you so much for carving some time out today. Best of luck hey, in life. Hey, it was the coolest school. Uh, you know, you guys had the best. Uh, well, I loved my high school, too, but you guys always had great plays, and we would drive out there, and we were jealous of how big your school was. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be on your radio station. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been WNTH Radiothon on 88.1 FM. I'm Julia. I'm Becca. He's John Mulaney. And I'm John Mulaney. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just about it. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank so you. Much. Talk to you soon. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye.